Welcome back pre-calc students to unit 8 linear programming day 2. We're actually going to get started in the linear programming process today. We're going to use our tools we spent some time on the other day dealing with uh, graphing inequalities and also finding uh, intersections or solutions and use them in this process. All right, let's go through some terms real quick. I want to speed things up, so I'm just going to read them. You can obviously stop the video and write them all down. Linear programming is a strategy or a process, so it's the whole thing, linear programming process, used to find maximized or minimized quantities. Oftentimes, profits are maximized, costs are minimized. Constraints or limitations, the set of inequalities used to find the solution set, the multiple shaded region like we did yesterday. Feasibility region is the fancy name for that solution set of the system of inequalities. And we're also often going to find the corners of those uh, regions. Objective function, the thing we're looking to maximize or minimize. Again, often profit gets maximized, cost gets minimized. What's the biggest profit? What's the smallest cost? And then this is valuable, the optimal solution theorem, also known as the optimization theorem. The only possible max or min value of a feasibility region must occur at a vertex or a corner of that feasibility region. We don't need to test every point inside a region, which could be thousands, who knows? We just have to test the corners. All right, so that gets us started. We're going to do like what we did yesterday, but we're going to add a piece to it. We're going to graph this system of inequalities. The first two, that just means quadrant one. X is greater than zero means to the right. Y is greater than zero means up. So we're just going to go first quadrant. I'm going to do this third one in red. X intercept is eight. Y intercept is eight. Last one in blue, x intercept, 2x equals 10, x equals 5, y intercept equals 10. So if I do the first quadrant, I'm going to put my x and y axes right here. Red line, well, first of all, green lines, green inequalities quadrant up that those are arrows up and over red x intercept eight two four six eight y intercept eight connect those with a nice line make it red yeah and now we'll do the blue line x intercept five one two three four five Y intercept 10 up here. Again, we'll make a nice line. Make it blue. And because both of these are less thans, we're going to shade down. So I might put a little blue arrow down to show that. Red arrow down to show that. And if I'm in the four shaded region, where am I? I'm in this wedge right in here. And let's pick up the corners. I see one, two, three, and four. Let's label them point one, point two, point three, and point four. What are they? Point one is the origin. Point two is all y, no x, zero, eight. Point three is two, comma, six. And point four is all x, five, comma, zero. Now, the last step we're going to do, we're going to take this z function here. Find the maximum value using the objective function z equals 4x plus 7y. So we could plug any point in the black region into this to see what the biggest z is. But according to that optimization theorem that we talked about, the max has to occur at one of the corners, at one of these green points. So I'm going to plug 
every one of these into the z, 4 times 0 plus 7 times 0. Show these steps. 4 times 0 plus 7 times 8. 4 times 2 plus 7 times 6. 4 times 2 plus 7 times 0. First option is 0. Second, second option is 56. Third is, let's see, 42 plus 8 is 50. And the last is 20. And we want to find the maximum. So the max is 56. And at what point? 2 comma 6. No, sorry, 0 comma 8. There would be no point possible that would give a bigger Z and be in the shaded region to meet all the inequalities. So the black shaded region is the feasibility region. Either it's smaller than 56 or it is not in that uh, shaded region. So that's linear programming. That's just one in a vacuum. Now we're going to put it to use in doing a, an actual scenario. We're going to make Hershey candy bars. All right, so here's what it says. Hershey Factory produces two bars. Let's pretend they do. They make a regular size bar and a miniature size bar. And here's some inequalities, some constraints, some limitations. The company must produce at least 1,000 of each bar, but no more than 3,000 regular bars. In total, there can only be 5,000 bars created. Declare the two decision variables. Give the three constraint inequalities. Graph the fe feasibility region. Let's do those to start, okay? What do we have control over? X equals number of regular bars made. Y equals number of mini bars made. So there's our two variables, our decision variables. Now we have to go through and create, sorry, there are actually four inequalities. It says, must produce at least 1,000 of each bar. X greater than or equal to 1,000. Y greater than or equal to 1,000. You could produce no more than 300 regular bars. No more than. X is less than or equal to 3,000. And in total, there can only be 5,000 bars produced. So X plus Y is less than or equal to 5,000. We got our decision variables, number of candy bars of each type. We have our four inequalities. Now we're going to graph them. So let's go first quadrant. So we'll put an x-axis over here. Put a y-axis up here. We'll label this as regular. We'll label this as mini. And... Let's go by, I think we can go by every two boxes is one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, and then this is going to be times a thousand. Beautiful. All right. Back to our inequalities. Greater than 1,000, greater than 1,000. So I'm going to put a 1,000 line here, a 1,000 line here, and I know I'm going up and over. Got it. Third one, x is less than or equal to 3,000. x less than or equal to 3,000. Again, I'll draw a line. Let's make it red, 3,000 and less. So now we're going to go, go this way. So right now the feasibility region is that small, narrow rectangle, but our last inequality says x plus y is less than or equal to 5,000. Let's use our intercept method. We're going to put a dot at 5,000 on each, connect them with a nice blue line. And it's going to be below, so we now have our four-shaded region. 
It's going to be right in here, below blue, to the right of one black, above the other black, and to the left of red, that feasibility region right there. I see four corners. One, two, three, and four. Let's give them some names. P1, 1,000, 1,000. P2, 3,000, 1,000. P3, 3,000, 2,000. And P4, 1,000, 4,000. Now we want to figure out profit. It says the company profits 25 cents on each regular and 10 cents on each mini. 25 cents on each regular and 10 cents on each mini. So profit is our objective. We're looking to maximize profit equals 0.25x plus 0.10y. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take those four points and plug them into the profit equation. And don't forget it's times a thousand point two five times a thousand plus point one times a thousand point two five times three thousand plus point one times a thousand point two five times three thousand plus 0.1 times 2,000, 0.25 times 1,000, plus 0.1 times 4,000. Plug those all in your calculator. What you get is 1,000, 1,000, we'd profit 350 bucks. 3,000, 1,000, we'd profit 850 bucks. Well, if we're looking to maximize, I'd sure take 850 over 350. Third is 950, and last is 650. So we want to maximize our profit, meaning we want this right there. So the optimal, the ideal, the best scenario in this would be to make, what did we say, 3,000 regular. And 2,000 mini to maximize profit. of $950. All right. So that was just one example. We are going to do another, but the video is going to run out in a second, so I'm going to just start that on a whole um, new video. All right, hope this went well. If you got to rewatch it again, no problem. The last one we're going to do deals with a, um, a dietitian's job of putting foods together to meet minimum daily re requirements of different vitamins. All right, have a good day, folks.